Right now is the worst time in history to buy a car. New car prices are up, used car prices are up, and supply is as thin as ever. With that being said, in the last year, I've purchased 10 different vehicles, which to be honest, I don't know if that's something I should be proud of or ashamed of. The thing is, is that though I do think that prices are incredibly inflated, and I don't think they'll stay this high forever, I also don't think they'll be going down anytime soon. So because of this, and because of the fact that nobody really knows whenever car prices are going to return to normal, some people have no choice but to buy a car in this inflated market. Now, with all of that being said, in today's video, what I want to discuss is how exactly to go about doing this. Because the car market has changed, used car prices are hard to come by, and whenever you find them, the prices are oftentimes inflated. So in this video, I'm going to be taking you through my entire process of how I've purchased cars throughout this last year. I'm going to be giving you my exact process, my exact tips and tricks, the platforms that I use, the platforms I avoid. And I'm going to be putting you in a position to where you can find yourself a below market value car, regardless of how inflated the used car market is. So let's dig in. Now, a couple of things that I want to know before we actually dig into the process is that yes, the used car market is absolutely inflated. And if you're somebody who's wanting to buy a car today, as I make this video, you have to come to terms with the fact that you are going to be paying a higher price than you would have paid two years ago or a year ago. That's just the unfortunate reality that we all live in. A car that would have cost me $3,500 in 2019 now costs closer to $5,000. And like I mentioned in the intro, I don't see this changing anytime soon. You'll hear throughout this video me mentioning below market value. And what this means is whenever you buy a car that is cheaper than what the average car is being sold for. So for example, a below market value car would be like a Toyota Yaris that's being sold for $5,000 rather than for $6,000 or $7,000. Below market value is all relative. It will change from car to car. It will also change from time of year. For example, a below market value car was priced at a different price two years ago than it was today. In fact, below market value cars cars today are probably considered overpriced cars a couple of years ago. This is again something that you have to come to terms with if you're somebody who's wanting to aggressively buy cars this year or if you're somebody who's just wanting to buy a car for personal use. The times have unfortunately changed and our mindset has to change with it. So step one of this process of finding below market value cars in 2022 is to figure out what exactly you want to buy and to make sure that you do your research. This is incredibly important because before you even log on to Facebook or Craigslist or autotrader.com, you want to have a really good idea of what type of car you want. Maybe you have a specific make and model in mind. Maybe you have a number of different makes that you want to look at that you'd be interested in considering. Maybe you have a set of mileage requirements that you want this vehicle to meet. Maybe your model requirements that you want it to meet. Regardless, of what filters you have in your own head, what specifically you're looking for, it's incredibly important to have this narrowed down. The reason why this is important is because you want to be able to recognize a good deal whenever you see it, and you want to be able to jump on that good deal immediately. Because if a car is truly priced below market value, it's not going to last very long. So you want to be able to be prepared whenever that deal comes in front of you. The other reason why this is important is because you don't want to waste your time looking for cars. If you cast a really broad net in the type of car that you're looking to buy, you're going to spend hours looking through cars that you're not even really interested in purchasing. So by narrowing down your choices, you're able to look for a car much more efficiently. And as a result, you can skim through more cars throughout the day, thus finding that needle in the haystack, which is the below market value car that's actually worth buying. Now you may be wondering, well, how do I figure out what type of car I want to buy? And that's a good question. So here are some of the tips that I've found and some of the things that I do. Number one is just by looking. Like you'll notice as you're driving on the road, you'll find cars that you like and ones that you don't like. And obviously you want to buy a car that you like. This is a great place to start because you can get started with the cars that aesthetically are appealing to you. From there, looking into maintenance and repairs is always a great second step because a car may look really good, but if the car isn't reliable, then it's not worth buying. There are a number of different routes that you can go down to do this type of research. Number one is to join Facebook groups. There are a lot of different Facebook groups online for different owners of different makes and model cars. If you join these groups and if you just lurk and read the posts, you'll quickly find out which types of cars have major issues. Number two is appreciation. Typically cars that are unreliable depreciate quicker than cars that are reliable. For example, a Nissan's going to depreciate much quicker than a Toyota. Looking at depreciation data can give you some good insight into how valuable that car actually is. 
Number three is recall history. Does this car have a history of perpetual recalls? If the answer is yes, then maybe it would be worth doing either more research on this vehicle or avoiding it as a whole. And last but not least is forums. Forums that are dedicated to a specific make and model, and trust me, there are tons of them, as well as Reddit can be really great places to look to see how owners of these cars are enjoying these cars. Nobody is going to know more about the reliability of a vehicle more than somebody that owns an actual car. In fact, going this route is exactly how HP and I have been able to avoid really bad vehicles. We'll look on Reddit, we'll see what owners are saying, and if there are enough complaints about one singular issue, that will typically be enough to make us avoid that car as a whole. Once you've checked off the box of doing your research whenever it comes to reliability, now is figuring out what price is a good price to pay for that car. Remember, we're looking for below market value, and this typically means that this is below average of what you see online. So for example, if you see a car like a Mazda that's being priced at $6,000 pretty consistently across the board, then finding that exact same car priced for between $4,500 and $5,500 would be considered below market value. To figure out what would be a true below market value for a car, looking at websites like Facebook, Craigslist, AutoTrader, KBB, all of these are really great resources that give you a really accurate gauge at what a average price for that car is. For example, if we look at Kelly Blue Book value right here, you'll see that for a private party vehicle like a Toyota Camry, the average price is between 8,100 and 9,700 private party. In my experience, KBB tends to be very conservative with that average. And I would say in this set of circumstances, anything below $8,500 or like $8,600, $8,700 would be considered below market value. So if I was, for example, looking at this trim level Toyota Camry, I would definitely consider buying that car at $8,500 because I believe at that price point, it is below market value. So at this point in your process, you should have an idea of what car you wanna buy, whether or not that car is worth buying, as well as the fair price or below market value price that you should expect to pay for that car. So now it gets to the point of actually looking for that vehicle. And that begs the question of, well, where should you look? Now, whenever you're looking for a used car, there are a ton of different options out there from the more traditional platforms like autotradercars.com. You can also look at Craigslist. You can look at Facebook. In my experience, I think Facebook is the best. There are a lot of duds on Facebook, don't get me wrong, but in my experience, those are where the below market value cars actually are. Craigslist used to be my platform of choice, but over the years, I think Craigslist have been riddled with spammers, and as a result, I've simply stopped using it. Now, whenever I'm looking at Facebook, there are a few things that I do to make my time of looking for a car a little bit more manageable. The first thing I'll do is I'll search for whatever car I'm looking for. So if I'm looking for a Ford Focus, I'll type in Ford Focus. If I'm looking for a Mazda, I'll type in Mazda. I'll simply type in whatever car I'm looking for. This makes my search much more easy to digest. In this example, we'll do Mazda and we'll just leave the, the model vague. So then it'll throw us out all the different Mazdas in my area. So whenever I'm looking at Mazdas, you'll quickly see like the different types of Mazdas, the prices that are listed in your market. And you can also set like the filters of like how far away do you want this car to be from your current location. A few things to spot whenever you're looking for a below market value car is you will quickly realize that a lot of the cars that are priced below market value are either salvaged or the payment is simply the monthly payment or the down deposit and it's actually not the full price of the car. For example, this 2018 Mazda 3 Touring, it's $1,500 with 63,000 miles, looks like the perfect car on the surface. But of course, if it sounds too good to be true, chances are it probably is. And if you click on it, you'll see that it says, 1500 down. So typically for me, if I see that a car is just like priced absurdly low, like in this example, a 2018 for $1,500, I oftentimes won't even click on it because I know either the car is broken, it has something seriously wrong with it, or alternatively, it's just the down deposit and it actually isn't gonna cost 1500. This will save you a lot of time in the long run. Another thing to be leery of is rebuilt titles. If you're wanting to get a car for the sake of renting it out on Turo, the car cannot have a rebuilt title. It has to be clean. If you're wanting to get a car for personal use, of course, that's up to your personal discretion. For me, I'm not interested in owning rebuilt titled cars. It's just my own preference, especially because I use these cars for Turo. But you can see here that this 2011 Mazda 3 with 90,000 miles 
According to this listing, this could potentially be the perfect below market value car. The photo isn't very good, which maybe indicates that the seller's a bit lazy. It's priced at $3,000, which is a great deal. But then if we click on it, you'll quickly notice that the car, if you click see more, it has a rebuilt title, which is why this car is so cheap, which is of course a reason why you'd want to just avoid this car altogether. You can see a couple of different examples of what I would consider to be below market value cars. For example, this 2011 Toyota Camry, that's $6,900 with 123,000 miles. The photos aren't amazing, but they're okay. And the car is clean, it has leather interior. This is a very nice car and it's a Toyota, which you guys know I love, but Toyotas hold their value. They're incredibly good cars. And so finding one for below 7,000 with 123,000 miles, that's a really good deal. In fact, I would be tempted to contact the seller for myself because this is such a clean car. This is a car that I would absolutely consider to be below market value. I know that based off of KBB data, I also know it based off of the Camrys that I see on these platforms every single day. And this is a car that I would not hesitate to buy. Another great example of a car that I would potentially buy is a 2010 Mazda 3. You can see again, the photos aren't great, but they're solid. And you will probably notice that as you're looking at platforms like Facebook, especially cars that are priced fairly cheap a lot of the photos are not very good they're always pretty bad which in my opinion is a good thing because if somebody is too lazy to clean out the car and take solid photos to me that indicates two things either one the seller is just lazy they're not interested in putting a lot of work into it or number three they want to sell the car fast i feel as though i've gotten my best deals of buying cars whenever the listing really is pretty unprofessional because it indicates that the person just wants to sell and they would be inclined to take a lower price for that car in the case of this Mazda 3, the photos aren't bad, but they're not great. We go through it, the car has 120,000 miles, the car looks pretty clean, and it's priced at 4,900, which is a solid price for this car. It also has a clean title, which is a huge plus. The only downside is the fact that it's tan interior, but sometimes you have to make compromises. And in this case, I would definitely look at buying this car, of course, pending that it is mechanically sound. Now, looking for the car is just one portion of the equation. You then have to negotiate for the price of the car. And this is an important piece of the puzzle. And you'll wanna keep this in mind whenever you're actually looking for cars on Facebook, because you may find a car that's just an average price but just because it's listed at an average price doesn't necessarily mean that the seller won't sell it for a below average price and this is something that i've done with every single car that i've purchased for example we go back to the mazda 3 that's priced at 4900 that Mazda 3 is a below market value car at $4,900. But you better believe that whenever I message that seller, I'll ask them if they'll take lower, if they'll take 4,500, 4,300, whatever the case is. The formula that I have found that has been very successful for me is whenever I find a car that I wanna buy and that I'm interested in checking out in person, I'll message the seller. I'll say, hey, is this a clean title? I wanna make sure to confirm that first. They'll say either yes or no. Of course, if the answer is no, then I just move on. If the answer is yes, then I'll say, hey, would you take X dollar price? I can come today with cash. In the case of this $4,900 Mazda 3, I would say, hey, would you take 4,500 cash? I can come today. Or in the case of the $6,900 Toyota Camry, I'd say, hey, would you take 6,300? I can come today with cash. I've learned that by throwing out a number and saying I can come with cash today, not tomorrow, not this weekend, not next week, today, that that has always been very successful because the idea for people to get this car out of their hair, to have some cash in hand, this is something that is really enticing. And I've learned that more often than not, it will allow for the seller to sell the car at a lower price. Then from there, it really is just about inspecting the vehicle and making sure that it's worth buying. This is probably a topic for another video as I definitely couldn't go into it in this one in full detail. But in general, the process that I've just laid out is the exact process that I look for whenever I'm buying below market value cars. In general, I would say that buying below market value cars comes to three core things. And if you follow these three core pieces of advice, you'll be setting yourself up for success. Number one is to know which car you're wanting to buy and do your research. 
Number two is always offer lower than the listing price. This is something that I do all of the time and I would say 99% of the time it works, though maybe not to the degree I was hoping for. And the third tip, and I would say definitely the most important one, is to be patient. It is very difficult to find below market value cars in this market. And even though I've purchased 10 of them this year, I've only been able to purchase these 10 because I look through so many duds, so many bad cars, so many listings to find those needles in the haystack. You have to be patient. You have to make sure to stick to your guns. And if you do those two things, you will be able to find a gem of a below market value car. But with that being said, you guys, I hope that this video provided you with some valuable insight into how you can navigate the used car market in 2020. This was a video that I created due to popular request. This is something that I get asked a lot. So hopefully this provided some insight to you guys. Like always, if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next video.